I've got to unhook this spring. So if I put a pair of uh, tip of a screwdriver behind that arm so it can't move out the way, I can grab the spring and I've only got to move it a very small distance to unhook it. You don't put something behind that arm, you'll find you're chasing the arm as the spring fails to lift out. That's out, take out the little pallet wheel. Single screw here, that's loose. Holding that spring in place, that spring has two functions. One is to return the B lever, the other is to act on the arm here for our flash sink settings. There's a small spring here, needs to be removed. I'm putting my toothpick over the centre of that post so the spring can't get away. That spring is very good at escaping. That's everything I need off the front of the shutter. We can open it up from the back now. First I need the outer case off. So I'll loosen up this little clamp screw here for the flash contact which somebody's been gone overboard on that one. Remove the three screws that hold the outer case to the shutter case. Slide the case off. We've got our curved rack and there's a curved pusher that the rack moves and that in turn pushes on the internal cocking rack of the shutter. Okay, so that's all good. From the rear there are three screws hold the diaphragm setting lever in place. It is a bit stiff. The blades don't look particularly oily but perhaps they are. Of course, if you're taking a shutter apart like this, you'll be laying out the pieces carefully in a line so you know where the screws came from, what they belong to. I'm not, because I've done, I've done heaps. That screw was a little bit. rough looking like someone had over tightened it. Right so the shutter case should come off. There's our mechanism plate with the shutter blades. Here's our shutter case with the diaphragm blades in it. And that is quite stiff. The blades don't look particularly oily. I can see a fingerprint on those blades at the back. So someone has poked their finger in there after, while the lens has not been present. That'll clean up. And the mechanism plate. Well the shutter blades fell off and they're not stuck together, which is a good sign. It means that the shutter's been serviced and all the oily bits are gone. The mechanism plate looks like it's been serviced because it's unusually clean. Three screws hold the lens tube in place. One is slightly longer than the other two because it goes through that bracket which also holds the main drive spring. Put that to one side. Here's the blade actuating ring. Unhook that. It all looks neat and tidy. The shutter case. Three screws hold the retaining plate in place. And we tip out the diaphragm. Now that's a bit greasy looking. That's probably where the stiffness was coming from. There is oil, visible oil, 
on that plate here and here that must have soaked in from the back. You can see it sitting in the case here and here. Well that would have soaked through to the blades and caused them to become stiff. They look quite good. They look to be in quite good order, not overly oily. But this piece here is oily and that would have been binding on the case. That's why the diaphragm setting was a little bit stiff. All of this stuff needs to be cleaned and then reassembled. I'll start the shutter reassembly by reassembling the diaphragm. So just get the neck the plate there, the retainer plate in place on that jig. And the rivet is up. Put the diaphragm blades in place. Diaphragm blades, of course, are interleaved, not just lay, laying on top of each other like shutter blades. So it means that you have to peel back the earlier blades to get the later blades in as you're assembling it. And then lift this blade back over the top. Get all those blades correctly positioned. And the moving plate that sets the aperture, that drops on there. It only goes on in one position. Here's that rivet I mentioned. And here's the pivot, the point on the moving plate. Now I get the case on here. The case only goes on in one position. That little rivet has to come up through the case. It's quite clearly comes up through that little hole there. Give that a wriggle. That's done. I lift the outside of my jig off. Put it in underneath to support the shutter. Or support the case. And I can get the three fixing screws in place. Now all of these com shutter components I've cleaned carefully just using naphtha, cigarette lighter fluid and a cotton bud to remove any dust, dirt, grease, oil, anything that I don't like the look of. Get these three screws in on the retaining plate, do them up lightly. done with that. Check that that moves smoothly and make sure the three screws are now done up tight. Don't overdo it, you're only going through very thin aluminium and you will strip them out if you overdo it. That's nice and free compared to how it was when we started so that's a win. The mechanism plate the next piece. Here's the blade actuating ring. We have to get that in under that spring. Get the blade actuating ring dropped into place. And get that detent spring lifted into position over that pin. That's sitting there comfortably. The lens tube only goes on in one position. One of the three spots has got the edge chewed away so it can go past that pin there. There are three screws that hold this together. One of them's longer than the other because it has to pass through this bracket. This bracket sits on that pin I just mentioned previously. The longer screw goes through there. Let's get that started. Check that there's nothing trapped underneath the blade actuating ring. That's all looking good. 
get the other two screws in position. If you mix up those screws you'll end up with a long screw sticking out through the mechanism plate and it'll foul the shutter blades. If you put a short screw where the long screw should be, when you do it up it'll only be engaging half as much of the aluminium as you'd expect and your chances are you'll strip, strip the thread out of the plate which is not a good thing. That all moves nicely. I'm going to lubricate this with a bit of graphite powder. You could lubricate it other ways. Um, a wipe with uh, labdanum paste. You could use pencil lead. Rub pencils from a soft lead pencil around that blade actuating ring before you put it together. You could even put a wipe of graphite grease in there if you so desired. And that's certainly been done frequently enough in the past. I'll drop some graphite powder in here. And I should be able to work the mechanism plate to work that graphite powder in between the blade actuating ring and the lens tube and mechanism plate. Just tap that to get rid of the excess. I'll go and blow this out. Right, I'll set this in the blades open position. That's that way. Just against the tube. And start putting the shutter blades in position. We have five shutter blades. And the first one goes here. Second one here. Note that position there. Third. Fourth. And the fifth. Now I'll put the case over the top, that only goes on one way, get that correctly aligned, lower that into position, give it a wriggle, make sure it's seated. There are three screws that hold the shutter case and the mechanism plate together, I'm doing those up very lightly. always possible that a shutter blade gets displaced when you're lifting the case over and you don't want to trap it between one of the pins and the case and damage anything. Alright, let's see if it moves. I open and close smoothly, nothing's displaced. I can tighten up my three screws. Right, that's all good. Now, start putting the stuff on the top of the mechanism plate, starting with a spring. A piece of something stuck on my tweezers there. Let me see if I can see the back of it. This spring. You see it? Yeah, I've dropped it in there now. This spring is awkward to fit, it's keen to get away, I'll zoom you in a bit. Hold a toothpick over the centre so the spring can't get away. Lift up the tail of the spring with my tweezers. No, it's not playing the game. I've got to get it behind that pin there. That's it. 
So now this is sprung loaded, this is sprung loaded. Make sure that the spring is seated neatly around that post, not sitting on top of it in some cockeyed fashion, otherwise it will cause you grief. Right. The B lever can go in next. I need to hold back this tab, push my blade actuating ring around, this will allow the B lever to drop right in against the lens tube. And the return spring for the B lever and this shutter is this one. And I've got to get that screw in there. Of course the spring's pushing everything away so it's awkward. Get that screw started. Now the spring here, I've got to swing that around so that it bears up against the inside of the lens, the lens tube here. And the tail of that spring, the long tail of it, needs to be... Oh, that spring's just popped off. Okay, let's have another go. Not sure I can get this spring seated back on that screw from here. Now I'm going to take the screw out and start again. It's under too much tension, you just you're trying to get both ends of that spring are pointing in places you don't need them to be. Right, let's put that screw there in my wooden block for the moment. See if I can get this spring seated over it. No, that's not going to work. go from the bottom then. This seats in the groove around the head of that screw. Like that. And back where we were. I'll bring that tail of that spring around and get it seated correctly on the B lever. Now I do my screw up, just check that that's working correctly, that the B lever is now sprung loaded. The spring sits tucked down here against this lever. That's all looking good. We hold the B lever up with my finger. I can bring the blade actuating ring back to the closed position. That's good. Here I've got the pallet wheel. Drop that into the shutter. And the little gear, the sector gear that drives the pallet wheel I've got here. The tail of that, I'm just putting a touch of molybdenum paste on there. So that it'll latch and unlatch easily. I hold back this lever here so I can drop this down into position. That'll do. And hook the spring into position. I'm using some needle nose pliers for that. Hook it over that post. Stretch it out, hook it into the arm. So when this is cocked and the shutter starts to open, the flash delay mechanism there runs down. Hold the B lever back, pull that back to the rest position. That's all good. A couple of spots of molybdenum paste wanted here. On the detent, the detent spring for the blade um, actuating ring. I'll just put a touch of molybdenum paste on there. On here and here on the blade actuating ring. That's where it contacts the main drive cam. 
Now while I'm here, there's a detent spring for the flash sink and uh, self timer sits right there so I'll just put a touch on there and that lever can go in next this is the settings lever for our flash sink self timer etc you can put, give that a wipe of molybdenum and paste over those teeth there those little ratchet teeth and put this in place now the pin needs to drop behind that spring on the return spring the same one that works the B lever it's just catching on top of it at the moment there you know that's right now so that's sitting correctly there's a shim that goes in there it only goes around one way and then there's the lever that adjusts our aperture settings and that drops on there. There are three small screws that hold that in place. I'll get them in place and then I want to check to make sure that the aperture setting is smooth and easy. If it's stiff you can end up in a situation where the shutter and aperture become disconnected from each other unexpectedly and you end up with an incorrect exposure. Get those three screws up and check that that moves freely. That's a bit stiff at one end of its range it'll be because this setting lever is warped and it means that probably someone's been swinging on this lever and they've effectively bent that, that ring so I'm looking to see if I can spot where that warp is and see if I can straighten it out it looks like it's at this point Oh, I'm going to cheat. It certainly appears to be there. Oh, that's pretty good. And here, perhaps, too. It's a bit squeaky. Something's rubbing on something. It's at that end of the range. I'm just flexing this to see if I can pick where it's taut. Not there. It's here. Not there. Oops. I'm sure it's there. I'll just slacken that screw off and see what happens. It's not the only spot then. Let's 
for selecting that screw off. No, that one. Yeah, it's all it's all the same. So there's a bit of friction in there somewhere. I'm going to apply a bit of graphite powder around there and work that in. Just want that where that runs under those screw heads. It could well be that the ring is rubbing on the aluminium lens, the aluminium of the shutter, and there is some fric in friction in there. That feels better. I'll just go and blow that graphite powder away.